So my name is Miguel. Uh, I'm a data product owner at OneWeb. I'm here today with Emily and Laurent. Laurent and Emily, please present, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, it's great to be here with you today. My name is Emily Pick. I am a Senior Partner Marketing Manager at Data.World, and I'm excited to talk to you about how Data.World is delivering data discovery in OneWeb's Data Mesh. So, thank Laurent? Yeah, thank you, Emily. My name is uh, Laurent de Vels. Uh, I'm a VP of Partner Marketing for DataOps.Live, and uh, let's hear it from Miguel now. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's crack on. So. What is OneWeb? Who we are? So, OneWeb is a global telecommunication company with headquarters in London, and we deliver internet all over the world. The self-server data hub is, in short, the data department of OneWeb. We have a quick video to explain, actually, what we do in a more graphic way. There's no sound. No sound? No. Great. <laughs> no sound. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks great. Or maybe great. not. Let's go. Take number two now. Let's let's hope the video now work. Okay. Since the beginning, the World Wide Web has never been worldwide. But OneWeb's new and truly global 5G ready network will fix that. Say you're working on the edge of the world and need to do a video call. Perhaps you're mid-ocean or mid-air. Wherever you are, you'll have a signal. OneWeb will connect your device through a customized terminal that can be as small as a briefcase and just as compact. Whatever your location, the terminal encrypts your data and sends it at high speed to our satellite fleet passing overhead. These spacecraft are radically innovative built in our own factory at 1 50th the traditional time and cost, shrunk to the size of a washing machine, yet engineered to deliver powerful throughput. Month by month, we're growing our satellite fleet, and soon we'll have not only the global spectrum rights, but the network reach to deliver truly worldwide coverage. And here's the revolutionary part. The fleet will be in low Earth orbit, 30 times closer to Earth than geostationary satellites. This gives you a stable, real-time connection with no interruption or annoying lag. What's more, our fleet always keeps moving, orbiting in a constellation design that creates seamless coverage. Each satellite uses a set of beams to cover an area the size of Alaska. Terrain is no obstacle. From its flight path and pattern, our fleet can always find your signal so we can get you online from even the trickiest locations with look angles that geo-satellite broadband simply can't deliver. We maintain high-grade system resilience from two op centers using state-of-the-art ops concepts. Cloud architecture gives us powerful scalability and control remotely. For example, we can remove satellites at the end of their service life so that the only trace we'll leave in space is on your screen right now. Now back to that video call of yours. We beam your data back down to Earth to our nearest satellite network portal. Then via one of our points of presence gateways, positioned in secure locations trusted by global providers, it re-enters the web. 
The journey you've just watched takes, at most, one tenth of a second. And there they are. Your video call is good to start, whether with colleagues or your family back home. So you need never be out of signal or out of mind. OneWeb will connect you from unconnectable locations and keep you productive on the move. It will be a breakthrough year when OneWeb technology creates real human progress, connecting everywhere for everyone. So now that we have a better understanding of what we do, let's uh, talk a little about the, the main challenge or pain points we are doing the implementation of SSDH. So imagine we need to build a constellation of 700 satellites. Imagine we need to send the satellites on top of a rocket to space. Imagine that when the satellites arrive in space, they open up, start charging, and start sending data back to Earth. Imagine this data go to our orchestration and data quality system where this data is ingested, transformed, and make way to a data cloud database. Imagine that all this data is automatic catalog and available to end users, all data products, all of them. Imagine prototype all that in less than six weeks. And imagine implement all these in production in less than one year. And scale, you may ask, 55 billion rows a day. And data just increase and increase each day. 32 snowflake tenants, proper data mesh implementation. Imagine that. So actually, you don't need to imagine that because that is what OneWeb did with Snowflake, DataOps, and Data.World. Our teams consume all data daily, and data is available to all users, all in a couple of minutes. So I'll pass now to the part where we decide which technology we need to use or we decide to use. So let's tell a story here. Let's go back to March 2021. I'll say again, 2021 it was not 10 years ago, it was last year. We have zero, nothing. No data ingestion, no data orchestration, no data quality application, no data catalog application to make data available to our users. No database. All the data was in different areas in the company, in different database, and not accessible to all users. We had a vision, but lots of questions as well. So we knew we were requiring a, a, a database. We wanted the database to be able to, to scale, you know, with light speed queries, where sharing data in the cloud will be done in a couple of minutes, not weeks. We had, and this decision in terms of database, uh, end up to be with Snowflake, a database that can scale with the data ingested uh, by OneWeb. And we have further requirements. We want, since the beginning, we decide we want to test our data. We don't have different levels of quality. You just have one label, which is a good one. Because we are in a data mesh architecture, so the data is shared between tenants. So we need to be sure the data is shared and has quality to all our tenants and users. For that, we select dataops.live, which is an application that connects with Snowflake, ingest our data, transform, and test all the data before the, our users consume it. It's just quality data. 
At the same time, we have the need to catalog all these data, all these data products. We want to, the users to be able to search quickly our data. Remember, we imp implement a data mesh. We have 32 data governance, sales, marketing, satellites, operations, and not all users have access to all tenants, but probably they need to access this data. So we use data.world as our enterprise data catalog. So let's now give the word to Laurent to explain a little more in detail the data ops part. Thank you, Miguel. Can you guys hear me fine? Perfect. Um, so thanks, Miguel. Now that we've seen the solution and technology used, let's have a look at how DataOps.Live was key to OneWeb success. Just don't take it from me, just look at what David Bath uh, called it on this. For him, the, really the key thing was creating clarity and repeatability in a hugely dynamic context. Providing agility, data orchestration, so really it was the way of balancing agility and governance without sacrificing one over the other, both at the same time. The self service that opened in March 2021, as Miguel said, was initially started as a POC. It was to be, to be a few months, three months, and it was turned into a self-service data hub, SSDH, as Miguel said, in only a couple of weeks. So it, they have moved from vision to execution in under six weeks. That's really a massive like, success because usually you know that data hub's project could be 12, 14 months going to years. So this was a really an amazing achievement. So now let me tell you a bit more about what we do and how we do it. DataOps.Live was built to meet the real-life needs of modern data-driven companies using Snowflake's data cloud. It removed the need of enterprises to choose between governance and agility, as I told you before, delivering fundamental improvements in both. So that's really critical for us. The next thing is we're the leading provider for Snowflake environment management. So we provide end-to-end -end orchestration, CI-CD, automated testing and observability with no compromise on data security and governance. We provide faster de deployments, parallel collaboration, developer efficiencies, data insurance, simplified orchestration, and we, in the end, you can build data products really quickly and effectively. With DataOps at Live, to summarize this, we automate the build, test, and deployment of the Snowflake Data Cloud. So don't just take it from me. Let's have a look at how fast OneWeb was able to gain a massive value from the network. And more importantly, using an insanely high amount of data. OneWeb was able to, again, move from vision to execution in just six weeks. And that helps that live delivered orchestration, reliability, agility, and data sharing. So those are really the four pillars of what we delivered to OneWeb. OneWeb was, as used data mesh, to create a single source of truth for all data. More than 200 tests were run per data source and everything was automated. So to make sure that if you bring anything new, you can just reuse the same rule as before. You don't need to develop this, have manual walk around or manual interaction every time. And we can manage all the tenants in a single place and push changes directly within seconds. And if I want to change the size of the warehouse, change tenants, resource monitoring, all can be done remotely and instantly from a single point. So that's really something that's, it's, it's like a really crazy important. The next thing is, OneWeb was able to save millions of dollars in Snowflake credits, thanks to both DataOps.Live and DataOps.World. And to hear a bit more about DataOps.World, let me uh, give the mic to, uh, Emily, so she can introduce you to what StataWell is doing. Thank you. All right, and then just double checking as well, you all can hear me? Fantastic. So before I dive into talking about data.world and what we do, I just want to take a moment to reiterate just how much data Miguel and the team at OneWeb are collecting each day. 55 billion rows spread across 32 Snowflake tenants. My bad, thank you. <laughs> 
So that's really impressive. But if you are a OneWeb employee, that can also be really intimidating. Where do you go to find the data that you need to answer your business questions? Who do you contact if you have a question about the data? And then how do you know that the data you've found is something that you can trust? So this is where data.world comes in. We are an enterprise data catalog that really focuses on collaboration, inclusivity, and agile data work. You can think of us as the knowledge layer for your distributed data ecosystem. We make it easy for business users at every level to find, access, and collaborate around data. What I really want to focus on today is three catalog capabilities that are fueling data discovery in OneWeb's data mesh. So we have semantic search, data lineage, and knowledge, uh, sorry, knowledge sharing in the enterprise. So the first one, semantic search. Again, the sheer volume of data that this company collects. Uh, Miguel told me the other day in one of our meetings that they actually have tables with more than 10 trillion with a T rows of data. Again, how is a business user do I know where the data lives and what, whether or not I have access to it? So data.world is built on a knowledge graph. What that means is that all of the metadata that comes into our system is mapped and linked in a way that is understandable by both humans and machines. This allows us to infuse business context into your data. So let's say I need to find some information on a user tenant within uh, the data mesh. We have a lot of user tenants uh, within Miguel's system. So uh, if I'm a business user, first of all, I need to know what is, what is a user tenant? So because we're built on a knowledge graph and who else is built on a knowledge graph but our good friends over at Google. Uh, if you notice when you search for anything in Google, if you're looking for a restaurant, if you're looking for directions, the first thing that's gonna pop up that's gonna draw your eye is that knowledge card that is on the right-hand side of the screen. So we actually do the same thing for your data with the business concept. And that's a really powerful tool to have at your disposal, especially if you're really trying to facilitate data discovery. All right, so second catalog capability. You've found a data set, you know what you want to use, how do you trust it? This is where our data lineage comes in. Lineage is quite literally one of the hottest topics in data and analytics today, and really for good reason. It gives you a top-down automated view of your data and analytics ecosystem. You know where your data is coming from, where it's going, how it's changed, and why. So back to our knowledge graph underpinning, one of the best things about our data lineage that separates us from other catalogs in the space is that you can actually query entities of the lineage itself. So if I Notice while I am in the process of creating an analyst report that one of the calculated fields in Power BI is <laughs> incorrect or has an incorrect value in it, uh, I can actually notify, say, my analytics engineer so they can create a uh, query and they can really pull in a report of every data set or every report anything that has been impacted by this uh, error within the data. And so we can get that changed in minutes. So that is a Yet again, another really impactful piece that you might want to have within your data catalog. All right, the last one. If you have been familiar with data.world at all, you know that our big focus is on knowledge, especially if you listen to our podcast, Catalog and Cocktails. You've heard Tim and Juan talk about the fact that uh, technology just isn't enough to deliver on the promise of a data-driven future. What you need to do is incorporate the people within your enterprise into all of the systems that you design and when you bring them into the process. So big thing here, if Miguel is like, hey, I'm really curious how this person pulled this report. All he has to do is go into the catalog, type in a search, he can pull up discussions, he can request access to a data asset, he can provide comments. We have a full audit trail within the catalog itself, what makes it really easy to track down what you're doing with your data and why. It's also really powerful for your business users who don't have a full understanding of the technical side. So we're just making it more accessible, making it easier to use, and bringing the power to the people. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Miguel to take us home. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Laurent. You left the best for, for the end. So, the most important part of a data mesh implementation is having the right team, right people, the right tools, and the right science. Big focus in the team, 
having the initial support from our partners, DataOps and Data.World, to guide us to initially implementation, the heavy lift, and make us put us in the right path was really important. Have power to, to the people, have the buy-in from one web management, our senior engineers to start using data and believe that was the way forward and producing these amazing, amazing dashboards we create today was really important as well. And power on people. The fact now is easy to, to collaborate between teams. Thank you. Five minutes, guys. It will not take long. So the collaborate, collaboration between the teams was really, really important. So we cannot talk about value without quantifying what actually it is. So when in the past, before SSEH and this data mesh implementation, you take weeks, sometimes months, to process our data and make the data available to our users to share the data with our clients. Now we can do that in seconds. Share data with a new partner, a couple of hours. You can be in a meeting, and after the meeting, I can have the, the data share with a new partner. Creating dashboards, that's real, really important for OneWeb. Our data is mainly time series data. In past, you take two, three weeks, and now we can, in a couple of hours, two hours, create a dashboard and make it available to all our users. Currently, just in Grafana, we have more than 700 dashboards, each one with lots of graphs, pulling data, from our data lakes. Data value, so we take data as, as a product. We know who is producing data, we know what we're doing with data, we know who will be consuming the data. So all this work in the past was done manually and take lots of you know, time from our engineers. Now we ingest 55 billion rows per day and most of this data is transformed don't forget, the data just adds value if it's transformed. Just ingest data will not bring value to the data. And this data that is transformed make way to our products and our end users and is analyzed in seconds. So when you start this session, we talk about the only thing I want you to remember. We did all this in less than one year, a data mesh implementation in less than one year. So we moved from vision to reality. So from vision to execution in weeks, from vision to production in months, all that with a small team of seven people, seven, not 70, 700, seven people. And in, you have the data in the hands of our consumers in minutes from space, to hurt to consumers, minutes. You know, this is space technology, guys. Our satellites move at 27,000 kilometers per hour. They produce data nanosecond, and this data go back down to Earth and is available to our users in minutes. Not weeks, not months, minutes. Now the important part about that. We monetize our data. We just signed a seven-figure deal with one client just to sell Two tables, two tables in one of our 32 tenants. You know, the future will say what will come, but my plan is by the end of 2023, we be net costs. So the money we spend with data, zero, compared with the money we, we, we bring in. So remember, from zero, from vision, to reality in one year. A vision without the implementation is just a dream. We implement it. All right, thank you everyone for attending. If you want to learn more about Data.World or Data Ops Live, you can visit us at our booths. Data.World is at 836. Uh, unfortunately, the best landmark I can give you is by the bathrooms on the far end. Uh, and then for Data Ops, they are right here in the center, uh, 614. So we'd love to see you out there. Once again, thank you for attending. Mm -hmm.